If are in listen only mode. Okay, everyone. I'd like to welcome you here today. I'd like to uh, say hello to the newbies and to those that uh, have been with us before. We're going to begin in about two minutes. I have uh, some introductory comments to make first. So for those that have listened to before, we'll begin in about two minutes. My name is Rob Altamont, VP Marketing of Harico Golf. And I'll be your moderator for today's Herico webinar titled The Basics of Shaft Abrasion. The webinar will be led by Herico's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Jeff has worked in all facets of club making and repair since 1984 and has devoted the past 20 years to researching, testing, and analyzing thousands of different golf shafts. He has compiled his findings and research into the Dynamic Shaft Fitting Index, which is featured in his best-selling books, The Modern Guide to Club Making and Total Club Fitting in the 21st Century. Additionally, he has authored the annual Dynamic Shaft Fitting Addendum, which instructs club fitters in the proper fitting and selection of shafts. Both books are available for sale online at hericogolf.com. Let me get a few housekeeping items out of the way first. Your audio settings are on mute, which means we cannot hear you, so don't worry about coughing or phones ringing in the background because no one can hear it. If you look at your GoToWebinar dashboard located in the upper right-hand corner of your screen, you'll see the, uh, a box labeled Question. If you expand this box, you will see an empty space for you to type any questions or problems you may have throughout the webinar. Because we have limited time, we are saving the question and answer period for the end when Jeff has completed his talk. Feel free to type any questions you may have, and I will make sure, time providing, that we will get to them at the end. And just a quick comment on that. As Jeff's talking and going through his slides, if you guys have any questions, uh, type them in as you, uh, as you uh, see fit, and then I'll get to them at the end. There's no need to wait until the very end. I'm not going to uh, ask Jeff the question until the end, but uh, you might as well type a question in as uh, something comes to your mind. If for any reason you must leave the webinar, don't worry. It is being recorded, and you will be sent an email with a link to the MP3 and slideshow of the complete webinar. With that, I'd like to turn it over to the Rico Golf's Technical Director, Jeff Summit. Take it away, Jeff. Thank you, Rob, and uh, thank you, everybody, for attending today. In our last webinar, we discussed how to properly cut steel and graphite shafts with numerous tools that were readily available. Now we're on to our next phase in the assembly process, and that's shaft abrasion. This stage is very similar to cutting the shaft as there are manual and motorized methods to accomplish our goal, which is preparing the shaft for a good epoxy bond. To bond the shaft and the club head together, high strength epoxies are required. For the epoxy to secure the shaft tip to the club head, the chrome plating on steel shafts, or the paint and polyurethane coatings on graphite and composite shafts, must be adequately uh, prepared. If not, you have too smooth of a surface, which greatly increases the risk that the head could come flying off the shaft. As a club maker, you're responsible for what you build and to, or, or repair, so it's important you do all you can do to ensure that the club will stay intact. Failure to do so can result in getting someone injured or in that person coming back for you, uh, to you for some sort of restitution. The proper amount of shaft tip abrasion is often underestimated by inexperienced club makers. Too many times the epoxy bond between the shaft and the head fails because of an inadequate amount of abrasion to the shaft tip on the part of the club maker. On the opposite extreme, too much abrasion can lead to premature breakage. So there's a correct amount of abrasion, which is easy to understand once you follow the right procedures. The only time you have a, a shaft that does not need to be tip abraded is in the case with over the hosel installations, like in some putter assemblies. Even in those cases, the stem of the club head to be fitted inside the shaft will need to be abraded for proper adhesion. Following, I'd like to discuss the acceptable methods of shaft abrasion, as well as the pros and cons with the various types of shafts. Okay, wait a second while the uh, screen flips over. There's a little time delay here, so that's, that's why. Okay, by far the least expensive but at the same time, the most time-consuming method of shaft tip abrading involves hand sanding with strips of sandpaper. For steel shafts, you want to secure the shaft in a vice clamp in your, in your bench vise. 
use uh, approximately one inch wide strips of 80 grit cloth back sandpaper to braid the tip of the shaft. In each hand holding one end of the sandpaper, go in a back and forth motion on the shaft tip, much as if you were shining your shoes. We'll call this the shoe shine method. This is uh, by far the best method I've found to ensure a nice even shaft abrasion. All the shine should be removed, and it should look like the shaft tip has a, cor a coarse, uh, brushed, uh, like satin finish afterwards. Note that 100 or 120 grit sandpaper is just not as coarse as 80 grit. While these may work, uh, not only will it take more time to properly roughen the surface, it will require more strips of sandpaper uh, as it will wear off quicker. You also need to rotate the shaft several times and inspect the degree of roughness so that it's even all the way around. One tip you might want to employ before you ever start to sand the shaft is to put a mark on the shaft or run a piece of masking tape around the shaft for the portion that you want to braid it. Typically for uh, clubs that require ferrule, a braid the full length of the shaft that will be inserted into the hosel plus one half of the length of the ferrule. For heads that uh, do not require a ferrule, like uh, most putter heads or, or uh, putter shafts, mask, mask the uh, shaft very carefully. By abrading the chrome on the steel shaft, it can lead to rusting and eventual breakage if it's exposed above the top of the hosel. Because the chrome plating on the uh, shaft tip is more difficult to abrade evenly, hand sanding is not the preferred method preparing for, for preparing steel shafts but it's still adequate if that's all you have access to. However, hand sanding is a perfectly acceptable way of abrading graphite or composite shafts. It's recommended to use less coarse sandpaper on a graphite shaft like 120 or 150 grit as it will sufficiently cut through the paint and polyurethane on the shaft tip. You want to use that same shoe shine method uh, or sanding motion we had mentioned before. Okay, this next part's very important. You want to uh, remove only the protective polyurethane and paint coating until, until you reach the bare shaft. Be very cautious not to over sand by removing too much graphite material from the shaft tip, as this will uh, weaken the shaft tip and potentially cause breakage at a later time. And manufacturers will not warrant shafts that break as a result of over sanding. There are a few things I'd like to discuss before we go any further. The first is the tolerances on the uh, tip diameters. When you sand the tip, it obviously becomes smaller. But uh, there will be some cases that even after you sand the tip, the shaft will still not fit into the hosel. One thing, do not sand any more down than, to, than the bare shaft itself. In those cases, you want to enlarge the bore of the hosel. This is uh, considered a normal club making procedure. Yes, it could be a pain in the you know what because it requires some extra work. But failure to do so could lead to breakage uh, at the tip and not to mention potentially scarring your reputation as a competent club maker if this occurs on a regular